my government name is Leonard J. Siebert, and uh, something about the trail, if you're on it long enough, you get a trail name, so I go by Crazy Wolf now. I was brought up as a military brat, so Fort Sill, Oklahoma is probably my key point. Uh, before then, I was in uh, Marlin, Texas, and I was probably about three or four, and I got to meet my real grandfather, and he was a full-blood Cherokee, very interesting guy. And he straightened my mind out in a lot of ways. But one of the things he said, you know, when you're out here, this is where you live. This is who you are. And I always worried he told me about Anglos and what they'd done to Native Americans. So I was angry. He's like, well, you don't understand something. It's not us that change the land. It's the land that changes us. We're seeing an awakening in uh, ecotourism, an awakening in uh, just wanting to be out in nature, to unplug from reality and come into reality because uh, you know, as much as we all use the internet, as much as we uh, rely on these technological efforts, it's a contrived reality. It's, it's something controlled by somebody. And they don't have our best interests at heart. Where nature is non-biased, nature is just there. And it's how you learn to live with it that either improves or can destroy you. I mean, going out in the woods ignorant is a dangerous thing. Uh, going out in the woods to learn, study, as long as you have a good guide, is a great thing. Because you learn things quickly but domino effect if you're not careful. I came out of D.C. pretty soured on humanity. I, uh, basically, I was hiking solo and I just wanted to be left alone. I mean, I got a lot of times, it'll be in a, come to a gap, somebody would offer me a ride, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm just gonna have walk. But uh, slowly, you know, a couple of weeks into it, started having more conversations with people and uh, my attitude changed. It was kind of a revelation, it's like, what I was existing in D.C. had soured me on a false idea. This is how all people are, isn't true. Um, but I out in the woods, I found out people are a lot better. And they're just more open to conversation. They're more open to exploring their own humanity as it applies to a natural environment. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, sociologists all claim they have to cure to depression. I've actually seen nature cure depression easily, quickly, efficiently, no drugs. I think it's our own innate connection. I mean, uh, we can deny it all we want, but the reality is deep down, uh, homo sapiens, we're just an animal. We're, we're just afraid, scared, <laughs> uh, terrified animal existing in a cage. And once we get outside the cage and we see the woods, it's, I don't know, uplifting, freeing. But in nature, uh, it's kind of a second chance. It's like, okay, this is kind of where we belong. And yeah, I know we're not going to change the world. You, you can't change the world to be hunter-gatherers again. There's just not enough resources for that. But it would be nice if more people connected with it. While I, I, I don't deny Christianity or God, I'd, be, I'd lean more towards naturalism. In my view, when I'm out in the woods, I'm closer to creation than I'll ever be. I mean, comfort, comfort in nature is kind of an oxymoron. Uh, but... Uh, Inside my soul, I'm most comfortable, even if I'm, my body's uncomfortable. It just, like I say, I, I'm closer to creation than anywhere else I'm at. It's almost a Zen moment for me. Uh, it's, uh, you know, people always tell me, oh, don't you go to church on Sundays? And I go, no. Uh, at the time I was living in California and when I had this conversation, and I said, I go out to the Redwoods to the highest cathedrals. My ceiling is the pine cones and the needles. And a daffling light that comes through is better than any, uh, painted uh, stained glass window I've ever seen. I, yeah, I, I'm impressed with the architecture of the ancient churches, but the reality is this is where that vision came from. At some point when we were hunter-gatherers, someone saw that vision, I want to copy that in an edifice as we became builders, creators, or sub-creators, actually. I think Tolkien had it right. We're not creators, we're sub-creators. The ancient uh, Native American tales are there is no evil in the woods except what you take with you. There's the problem. Inherently, we take a lot of baggage in with us, and that causes our fears, that causes our state of unrest. Uh, the woods is non-biased. It doesn't care. It's like the universe. It doesn't care. So we have to understand that, and that is an awesome, awesome realization. It's an epiphany beyond what most people will ever reach. It's, it's difficult to say, it's okay to be out here, it's okay to be afraid. Now, why am I afraid? Analyze why I'm afraid. Oh, is this because of this, I heard this, is it true? Well, no, because I'm out here in the woods and 
no bad monsters are coming for me. You know, it's, it's something, it's like folklore kind of destroys. It's a good thing, we need the folklore, and we need to have those warnings, but to some extent we've uh, got in our minds that it's real. So when we go in the woods alone, it's a frightening aspect. But anywhere I go, I'm just much happier in a completely uh, natural environment. It's, uh, you know, I don't know how many people sit and just listen to a stream and listen to the music, the rhythms, uh, the repeating songs. I know it's big, people put the MP3 players on their head and jam through and hike, and that's great. If that works for you, go for it. Me, I, I want to hear the song of the woods. And it is a song, it's a rhythm, it's its own music, if you will. Uh, you know, you can compare, compare it to like uh, Mozart's uh, themes, his, his wonderful concert, concertos, but the reality is it's something that's never heard again, and you hear it, and that's it. You know, there's always a unique rhythm to it, it's always a unique sound, and you'll never hear the same song in the woods or in the forest or anywhere, even in the desert. You'll never hear that same song twice. So it's an experience that you, I would love everyone to try to at least try it once, you know, because I think there's a message in that song. I think uh, just like uh, we use, uh, le uh, what is it, uh, electro, uh, got a, what kind of uh, telescopes are you using now? Um, James Webb. We're trying to get a picture, we're trying to get sounds. The reality is the universe has a special music going on all the time. And it's never the same twice. And that's the important part, ever mutable, ever changeable. That's the fabric of the universe, that's the fabric of nature. It's always going to be changed, it's always going to evolve. What's evolving to you, I don't know. But I sure would rather be a part of it than deny myself it. And we tend to do that when we live in a set our, uh, civilized, uh, civilized society, if it were. <laughs> Uh, we tend to forget. This is this evolution is ongoing. We're not part of it when we put ourselves in a little cubicle and plug in. I think we all have a part to play in this. Uh, uh, one of the phrases a friend used to talk to me is be a positive force in the universe. I mean, deep down we're less than grains of sand on a beach, but the reality of it is if we can each have that innate desire to just appreciate where we are, when we are. I, I think it's a fearful thing for most people because we all have desires that extend beyond our means, probably beyond our capacities. Uh, we have dreams, there's nothing wrong with dreams, there's nothing wrong with fantasies, there's nothing wrong with escapism. However, we need to ground ourselves in something and you can either ground yourself in technology and the man-made concepts or you can ground yourself in what you actually evolved from. And sometimes it's the older, uh, the older ideas that are more important. Uh, it's, nature's here, it's, it's free, it's, go out into it, see it, experience it. You might find the song, you might hear the song that says, yeah, this is where I need to be. I just, I have nowhere else I need to be. I think here and, here and now is a good place.